Hello everyone, this is Arendelf once again playing Mech Warrior. Today I'm going to go ahead and just cover a few things that I missed in the last video, uh, such as uh, we were covering how to unlock modules with GXP, and I just forgot how to uh, purchase them with C bills. But we'll just quickly cover with the GXP part again. Pilot trees, this is where you unlock them with your GXP. As you can see, uh, you'll find it down here general experience that can be used to unlock skills and this is where those skills are located once again on your home screen you go to skills pilot trees where you will then find them it defaults to all you can either go to mech where you've got vision target support and sensors you can go to consumables which pretty much you know just these so they don't categorize them and then weapons where there is just a lot to go into range it's pretty much all weapons clan and inner sphere cooldown clan and inner sphere and miscellaneous all right by the way the miscellaneous appear to be the one single one where it's not uh, in the weapon category it doesn't matter if they're clan or inner sphere. Once you purchase the either one of these, it benefits both. All right, and I believe the AMS overload was also 10,000 GXP. All right, now back to the home screen. You can then go to the Mech Lab, where uh, of course you'll see the default screen. You go over to the warehouse, just cursor over it, it pops right out. See weapons, ammo, equipment, engines, and modules. Go here to modules and quabam. This screen opens up. First thing you'll see at the very top is consumables. Now, when you open up the consumable tab, you'll see the advanced UAV, airstrike, RD, artillery strike, the cool shots, the priority artillery and airstrikes, and the regular UAV down here at the bottom. It's alphabetized for your convenience. The consumables themselves, when equipped to your mech, will show up right here. I currently have a UAV and then an airstrike. The default keys for these, uh, for my UAV, is the home key. The default key for my airstrike here is airstrike. I'm pleh, is insert. So, for if you haven't modified these keys, and you put uh, whatever you want down here on bottom, just remember to deploy it as home. And this one is insert. I have customized these keys but I got used to the default keys before customizing them. Mech modules. As you can see up here at top you open that up and you see the 360 target uh, retention. Basically uh, if a mech runs behind you for a few hundred meters, 200 meters, you can still detect it. It won't much help for locking on to it, but at least you know where the little bugger's at, and you're still detecting that for your allies. I myself haven't actually even bought one of these modules and use it yet, though I have unlocked it. I just, I probably should in one of these days just so I can try it out, but as it is, I just don't see much use for it. One of these days I'll figure that out, though. The advanced seismic sensor, I have actually already put to great use and unlock several of these modules for use across many variants of my mechs. Basically when you're standing still, the basic module I believe has a 180 meter range and the advanced module which you see here has a 250 meter range. It's a pretty good detection. I know it doesn't seem like it's all that great, but when you're stationary and you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out where the enemy's at, you'll see these little blips popping up on your mini map. It gives you an idea of where the enemy's at, what their numbers are, and what direction they're coming from. It's actually a huge help, especially if you're looking to deploy a UAV. And you want to get a feel for how many enemies are where you can't see. And honestly, within 250 meters, your UAV will usually pick up whatever it is you're seeing on your seismic. All right, the advanced sensor range I actually do have on one of my mechs. Advanced sensor range increases the range by 25% and this is the advanced module the original I believe increased it by only 15% possibly 18 I don't know uh, it will never show you once you go past that another irritation I have with PGI in any case uh, 
I, for all intents and purposes, since I can't gauge it automatically off of my regular sensor range, all I can say is once I see a target, unless it's protected by ECM, I'm usually detecting that thing. I'll show you later the mech design that I have, but this isn't the only boost to sensor range I have on that mech. In any case, I can't particularly recommend advanced sensor range yet because I haven't been able to gauge it off of regular sensor range, but it seems to have come in handy for me. Advanced target decay, I heavily recommend for LRM boats. 3.5 seconds actually seems like a lot when you're pumping LRMs into somebody who's run out of your line of sight. It's 6 million C-bills, which is a bit pricey, but honestly, once again, I do heavily recommend it. Advanced zoom, if you are a sniper, it doubles the magnification. Regular magnification maxes out at 2. This goes up to 4. And for snipers, it's priceless. My gauze rifles, my ER PPCs, even ER large lasers. I love the advanced zoom. For 2 million C-bills, it is absolutely worth it. And airstrike accuracy and artillery accuracy, as you can see, I haven't actually unlocked. They have this little symbol right here, so I haven't paid the GXP to unlock them yet. The capture accelerator. Uh, it does slightly, as you can see, it's only a 50% boost. It does slightly boost your capture acceleration. And I actually put it onto my Locust, my Pirate's Bane, that I saved up the MC for. It's, it's all right, you know, especially if you're doing a capture race. It does give you that slight boost, which puts you ahead. So um, I would recommend it if you've got like a locust and you just want to fill up an extra slot on it. I've completely mastered all my locusts. So hill climb, as you can see, I haven't unlocked it. But for all intents purposes, it, it reduces the deceleration rate of slowdown when navigating slopes. When climbing hills, especially in assault mechs, that would be a huge boon. Improved gyros, I once again heavily recommend. If you're in a brawler mech, such as I have a battle master that I've equipped this on, every single time I get into a heavyweight firefight, even though he has all lasers, every time I get hit by ballistics, or for that matter missiles, shakes up my screen. Improved gyros actually de uh, decreases that. Well, reduces the amount of screen shake when being hit by enemy fire. Enemy lasers won't do that to you, but frag if ballistics and missiles don't. So it just makes sure that all my shots hit when I do alpha strike. Radar deprivation. I heavily recommend this on light mechs. Every time you pass out of the enemy's line of sight, you just vanish right off of their radar. Gone. That is a huge boon. And especially if they have uh, advanced target decay. Advanced target decay, 3.5 seconds. It instantly negates that. The moment you're out of their line of sight, advanced target decay doesn't even allow them to hold a lock on you. Shock absorbance, uh, absorb fall damage, the light, medium, heavy, and assault, different percentages. Whether that is, uh, it prevents damage up to an extra margin of you know 35% to 20%, or whether it just simply, once you actually get to the threshold where you're taking fall damage, it just reduces that amount of damage. Doesn't quite make clear but i assume that it, the threshold to take damage remains the same it simply reduces the damage you take speed retention 30 percent faster movement speed when having lost a leg which is capped at 50 kilometers an hour oh well, 30 percent faster is a bit of a huge boon but light mechs 90 percent of light mechs go so fast that once they lose a leg they're already going to be going 50 kilometers an hour so you can honestly just make those calculations yourself as to whether or not this would be good on a light mech. As for your other mech classes, well, while it would give a significant speed boost to an assault mech that lost a leg, they don't commonly lose legs in my experience. And there's honestly a lot of better things to put onto an assault mech. So this right here, I classify as next to useless speed retention. I can see no actual purpose for it. I mean, if you happen to have bottom module and you have a mech that could use one until you get something onto it that would actually be a benefit to it, I don't see speed retention being something you're like, yes, I want that. Target info gathering. Decrease the amount of time required for detailed target information by 25%. So you lock onto an enemy mech and you want to know what's on that enemy mech. It allows you to get the detailed information for weapons and whatnot. 
25% faster. As you can see, I haven't unlocked it yet. However, that is something I do look forward to eventually getting. And it only costs 4 million C bills. All right. Moving on to weapon modules. All right, as you can see on this particular uh, mech, my trebuchet, uh, Loot Diguar, and I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that, but whatever. I have four LRM-5s. Out of all the trebuchets, the Loop de Guar is the one that can actually equip four missile hardpoints. So I decided to do the Reign of Terror with four LRM-5s. And while they don't do a whole lot of damage altogether, a continuous stream of them does demoralize enemies. So I decreased the cooldown by 12%, increased range by 10%. Since that's my main weapon, even though an extra 100 meters doesn't seem like all that much, I decided I wanted that. All right, now I'm not going to go over the entire range of the mech weapons that you see here. However, for different mechs that you're going to be using, you're going to have different options available to you depending upon the hard points that you have. On this particular mech, I don't have any uh, ballistic hard points. However, if I did, you know, it might be something that I'd like to unlock, but it will still allow me to equip the AC-20 cooldown and AC-20 range, even though I don't have those. So you want to make sure that you actually are equipping the weapon modules that are pertinent to your mech. Okay. Now, as well as I covered in the last video, whenever you unlock a module and then you are purchasing that module, Make sure that uh, in the unlocking phase of it, that you're actually putting GXP into whatever one that you're using, that being Clan or Inner Sphere. I had a friend who actually made the mistake of putting GXP into, uh, I think it was an Inner Sphere module, when he meant to put it into a, uh, a Clan module, and he ended up having to save up another 3,500 GXP so that he could then put it into the correct one. It's a serious pain, and it sucks. As you can see on this mech, I haven't unlocked the uh, master slot yet, which means I haven't completely mastered this mech. But as you can see, I am at 17,000 XP and will soon have it completely mastered, allowing me to then equip another mech slash weapon module, which will probably end up being a mech module considering the main weapons I have on this thing. As you can see, are LRM-5s. I do have two medium pulse lasers. However, they are hardly the main uh, weapon on this thing. They're backup weapons, especially for close range. And I actually have used them to great effect. Okay, I will cover the design of the, uh, my mechs that I particularly favor in further detail later, but for now, we're going to go ahead and just move on. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and show you... Uh, I've nearly mastered the Timberwolf. You see, I have two of them completely unlocked, as you see by the blue here. I've basic tiered them. Once I get a third and I basic tier it, I will then unlock the elite tier. I'm going to go ahead and go to loadout on this thing so I can show you the modules. And I'm going to open up weapon modules. You see the CL on all of these. The Inner Sphere doesn't have an IS next to all their weapons. I believe that to be a flaw of PGI. That they should really designate. That way you're seeing a difference between them more starkly. But just so you know, you'll see the CL on all clan weaponry. And if there's no CL, that means it's an Inner Sphere weapon. Besides that, mech modules are convertible across the board. If you were paying attention earlier, you saw that I had an advanced zoom module on my last one. If I were to unequip this advanced seismic sensor from this Timberwolf, it would be equipable to uh, any of my inner sphere mechs as well. Mech modules and consumables are usable across the board on all mechs. Alrighty here. And once again, I will cover uh, builds that I favor more strongly across my favorite mechs furthermore in the future. In any case, I do recommend uh, for your different play styles. As you can see, you can see my ER medium lasers and my large pulse lasers. Do I have any modules to complement those? Yes, I do. My ER medium lasers have a 10% increased range. Once I master this thing, I'll be able to actually, I'll use this definitely for another weapon slot. The Timberwolf has only one weapon slot and one mech module slot, which is unlike my trebuchet, which had two weapon slots. So pros and cons, pros and cons. 
but the Timberwolf is still one of the most pinnacle platforms. Advancing the uh, extra range medium laser allows me to be able to punch out just a little bit further and almost match the weapon uh, range of my large pulses. So it's just a particular build that I'm currently experimenting with with this mech. And I'll tinker more with it when my unit transfers back over the clans and we tour again with them. All right, well, I hope you very much enjoyed this video. I very much look forward to getting any comments, questions. Feel free to field them. I will answer them as best as I can. If you'd like to see a particular, uh, well, anything, gameplay, a certain mech design, anything like that, I'd be more than happy to, you know, try that out in the future for you. But besides that, I'll look forward to seeing you again in the future. Don't get in too much trouble or do. Always up to you.